you take the hydrogen from the beta carbon. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And you get a product that looks like this. Now, when you look at the problems that your instructor gave you here, you can see what he was trying to test. First he gave you this, and then he gave you this. One right after the other over here. So you can see he's specifically testing the only difference between these is the difference between the non-bulky base and the bulky base. And that's this little detail here in the table between this column and uh, this column. So, uh, yeah, so, um, so that's definitely the issue that he was bringing up here. Now, your, your test is not open notes, is it? And I actually, I had this here for this. Huh. But I, didn't, I never completed it. Uh -huh. Right. Now, I see. Test is not open notes. All right. right. Well, then the bad news is it takes work to memorize this table. Uh, but it's a doable enterprise. You just take a blank piece of paper and write down the table, and then you check it, and then you do it over and over. But you, you can see you really have to know it in detail because just going from one cell to another can be the exact issue that's being tested on the exam. So you really is testing the difference here that primaries with a O minus can still sometimes do SN2 or E2. So you really do need a, a really careful table to tell the difference between those two. Okay, good. Then, uh, Sure. Well, yeah, but let's uh, look at that. There we go. SN2 and E2 and SN1 and E1, these were some of the uh, most important reactions in the course. And these are reactions you'll still need next term, so I would expect that if the exam is cumulative, this would be the kind of stuff he's going to keep coming back to. What type of reaction are you predicting? An SN1. Let's see if we can confirm that in the table. Let's okay. find which cell we're in the table. We are in third degree. Okay, now let's point to the exact cell that we're in. Over here. Right, so the mechanism should be uh, E2. That's right. All right. Well, there's good news and bad news. Um, the good news is that if you actually memorize the table, there might be some good points to be had for you uh, on the test, because this is something the instructor is likely to come back to. The bad news is it takes work to memorize the table. It's a pretty complicated table. Uh, but if you can find the time, anything can be memorized. So, uh, so the point here is we can't just take a guess on these mechanisms. Uh, there's really very subtle distinctions that are being tested. So we really just have to have the table internalized to get the right prediction. Okay. Okay, so uh, we might as well now try to draw the right product now that we know what the right mechanism is.
Good. As one other organic product. takes the beta hydrogen, not the alpha hydrogen. So you've got that mechanism down. OK, well, it's just a matter of some people have time to memorize this complicated table, and some people don't. But if you have the table down, it looks like there will be points for you on those ideas. If you look at the problems here, you can see he just gave you a bunch of SN1 and SN2s in a row, where he just makes subtle changes to, this, to the reagents. And the only way to tell what the answer is going to be with all these several changes is really to have internalized uh, this table over here. Generally speaking, my, my tutoring philosophy is I always, I oftentimes feel like teachers present things in an overcomplicated way. And I always try to, to present things in a simpler way. Uh, but the bad news is I, this is as simple as this can get. It's still pretty complicated. Unfortunately, they, all the distinctions in here really are pretty frequently tested. So you really do need to memorize this complicated table to have a good chance on these problems. All right.